painting is another way of expressing our ideas and feelings about the world. There's an endless number of subjects to choose from and no one way to paint. Every person must find his own way. I am a painter and this is how I paint. An artist's work is, in a sense, his autobiography. Each of the paintings I have done grew out of my experience, mood, and thinking at some time in the past, just as my next painting will come out of what I feel, see, and think now. I am continually studying the world around me and my relationship to it. I observe things trying to understand what they really look like, learning how they function. For some time now, I've been studying birds and how they behave, their shapes, colors, textures, and movements. Observing the birds is not enough, I have to gather as much information as I can. Exploring the bird's natural environment helps me to understand my subject better. The natural objects I collect reveal the geometry of nature, its colors and textures. I learn the structure of each thing by sketching. A seed pod, a flower, the connection of a leaf to the stem, the stem to a branch. The geometry of nature is everywhere. I begin a painting by deciding on its proportions and size. The canvas is stretched on a wooden support called a stretcher. Working with wood and linen is a preliminary experience which helps me organize my attitude toward the painting.
For this painting, I prepare the canvas by covering it with a liquid gray wash. This wash makes the canvas more receptive to the oil paint. The gray value will give the picture a gentle, soft, uniform quality. The palette is my most important tool. There are many ways to paint, and each painter must choose the way that suits him best. I use a variety of techniques for different effects and moods. I like to cut down the handles of some of my brushes so they become an extension of my fingers. My hand is hardly separated from the canvas. knowledge that I have gathered and absorbed earlier is now transformed into feelings. The painting seems to take on a life of its own, and I respond to what is taking place on the canvas. My painting techniques are almost unconscious within me. Painting becomes as natural as speaking a language I know well. I don't have to think about the grammar. Everything that I have learned earlier expresses itself spontaneously. Sometimes I run into an obstacle. I feel that I have to get away from the painting. By creating distance, I can examine my feelings more deeply. Examine the textures of nature, its dryness and fluidity, reflections and shadows, movement.
I try to get myself into harmony with nature, forget about myself. I look at things. What are they really? What is their meaning? How can I respond to such variety, richness and invention? The answer can be found in the smallest things. A dead leaf, a piece of bark can fill my whole world. The information stored up earlier comes back to me. I can respond now not only to my subject, but also to my own ideas and feelings about it. By painting the world around me, I learn a little better what I am. I can find out more only by further description, the structure of a branch, the symmetry of a leaf, the movement of a bird. When I have described all I can say in this painting, it is finished. The finished picture is something new to me, outside of me. I'm almost a total stranger to it. But hopefully it shows a part of me to myself. Hopefully too, I can communicate through my paintings what I have experienced and felt. I must always go back to my sources, to nature, to my feelings, and to art, the art of other people and other times. I try to understand other artists, their ideas and emotions. Entering their world gives me a better insight into mine. Other artists communicate, teach, and enrich me with their art, and encourage me to go on with mine.